This is The Current Buzz, a podcast powered by Oklahoma Electric Cooperative and OEC Fiber, dedicated to teaching you what makes us different. Welcome to another episode of The Current Buzz. Kayla and I are here to talk to you as we look out over the snowy weather we're having right now, a little bit about what happens to our electric and fiber system when we do have inclement weather. So one of the things that we were, that we really don't want <laughs> for the electric system is ice. So snow, it falls, it melts. Uh, we might have a couple issues, but ice can really, really damage the lines. One of the things I just learned earlier today is that even as the, the ice is starting to melt, sometimes the bottom line, the neutral line will melt faster. So the ice weighs down the neutral, as it melts, it gets tighter. And as it gets tighter, if that top line, which is the line that runs your power, is not melting at the same rate, they can touch and they are designed to basically shut off when something touches them because we don't want people to get hurt. We don't want trees to burn down. Um, so that's really one of the things we see. Another big issue for us uh, when, when we have these kind of snowstorms or certainly any kind of high wind, again, because it can kind of make those, those lines jump, it's a little bit different for fiber though, right? So so yeah. when it gets really cold, what happens to our fiber lines? You know, um, that is the beauty of fiber. It's the beauty of fiber over other, uh, other internet type of technologies like copper um, that can really get affected by rain, by uh, temperatures. Fiber doesn't get that affected by it. Um, you mentioned wind. Wind moving our lines and blowing through a system can, at times, if the lines are really moving and shaking up there, it can cause breakages in the fiber, since fiber is essentially glass. Um, if it moves too much or if it moves in, in a jolting type of way, it can cause a break. Um, so that is one of our concerns, but we have devices out there that we can put on the lines to kind of help keep the wind from moving them around too, too much. Uh, but generally speaking, when it snows, it's not normally an issue. Um, that said, there can at times, if there is access to the fiber itself and water gets in there and then freezes, that can break the glass. Um, it is not something that is ever going to happen system-wide. Um, we have a great system in place with a lot of redundancy built in, uh, but that can happen at maybe somebody's home if there's an issue or if there's some way for water to get in, as everyone knows, uh, water will find a way. So if water can get <laughs> into that line and freezes, it can cause a break in the glass. But that said, if you're ever experiencing like lagging services or anything like that, please give us a call. Um, if you don't hear from us first, we have a great control room here monitoring for stuff like this. So that way we can be proactive and repair it before oftentimes you even notice that there is an issue. Um, for instance, I had a neighbor installed with fiber recently and they found an issue with my fiber line while they were installing hers. So they went ahead and sent somebody out to replace it. And, you know, it was up and running and before I even knew it, I didn't even know that I had an issue even. <laughs> so, um, so actually fiber is super sturdy in most weather. There are some small things that can happen, but it's very isolated. Um, and we're, we're always watching for that sort of thing. Well, and one of the things you mentioned that I want to underscore is this idea of redundancy. So one of the things that, that fiber replicated that we do on the electric side as well, is we have our system built out in what we call loops, right? So that if I have an, I have an issue at my house, I have the opportunity to find another pathway to get that internet. Um, or to get that electricity. And what that means is that if there is an issue, which as you've just demonstrated, doesn't happen very much with fiber, it gives me a faster option to kind of restore that line of communication. So really, really impressive. I've, as I learn more, I'm kind of blown away at this level of sophistication of both the electric system we have and the fiber system we have. And then as, as we continue to point out, just the natural partnership that exists between an electric utility or cooperative and a high-speed fiber to the home so power supplier or supplier, not power supplier, um, that there's so much overlap that we are better as, as partners, I think. Absolutely. And I think electric cooperatives, OEC has been doing their thing since 1937. So for a very, very long time. And 
there have been so many great lessons learned through that. So as we spun fiber up in 2017, 2018, and we were able to take a lot of those lessons learned and imply, apply them to the fiber system to make sure that we have the same reliability that our members have grown to expect from OEC. Absolutely. As you mentioned, if you experience any issues, please always reach out to us. You can do that through the My OEC app. You can do that on our website. You can do that by calling one of our friendly member service associates. Or, as Kayla pointed out, we might actually know about it and fix it before you even know about it. So that's, you know, best case scenario. Absolutely. All right. Thanks for joining us. You can find us at okcoop.org and oecfiber.com. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts.